Limbs monthly live stream. We're currently streaming on Twitter, YouTube, Instagram, Facebook. The tag is LWL Hope. Make sure that you tell someone, maybe even right now, hey, look, Nick's about to preach live. And yes, real live. Um, actually, it's going to be a really cool message tonight. Um, we've titled it Trick or Treat, God is Good. Um, it's the 6th of October. We're so excited. Um, you know, every fall, we kind of feel like we can relax a little bit. It gets a little cooler here in Texas. Um, and, you know, Americans talk about Halloween a lot at the end of October. And so we just thought it would be fantastic to talk about how, um, how we know that God is good. And, uh, you know, hitching the linchpin on trick or treat. Uh, we're going to get into it. It's going to be fantastic. And I know God's going to touch your heart. But before we get into it, just make sure that at the end of this message, you remember that we're going to also have a live Q&A. So make sure you stick around until the end. Uh, we're also live streaming on TikTok. Hi, TikTok. And uh, I'm going to do my best to um, uh, read your question that can be submitted um, in the questions below on the chat. So First of all, as we always do, shall we open up in prayer? Let's pray. God, we come before you and we thank you so much. First, for your love. How awesome it is that you love us, not based on what we do, what we've done. And we thank you, Lord, that your love never changes because you're good all the time. And you are the same yesterday, today, and forever. That knowledge, that understanding, and that conviction, God, we thank you that we can hold on to that truth. That truth that can always be there through the ups and downs. God, we uplift tonight, right now, everyone watching live. And we thank you, Lord, that there are reminders all the way through Scripture that not only are you good all the time and your love never changes, but you're always waiting for us to return to you. Even when we run a million miles an hour in the wrong direction, some of us deal with struggles and sins daily. Some of us question, do we really have a walking relationship with you? Some of us don't pray to you. Some of us don't read our Bibles. Some of us use the excuse that our church ain't open and that's why we don't have a walking relationship with you. And lastly, some of us feel like, no, I've gone so far deep into the dark that there is no way that God's still pursuing me. God, we thank you that you would open up our hearts and our minds. And Lord, that there is no addiction, no sin, nothing that could ever change your love for us. And it's also not about being a better person and saying a prayer. It's about walking lockstep with you and in our failures daily to grow closer to you, to read our Bible, to pray more, and Father, find the freedom we have in your grace and mercy as we strive to be the people you want us to be. As we strive by your grace and mercy to do what you want us to do and always turn to you in times of need and always thank you of times of blessing in Jesus name and all God's people said, Amen. Well, first of all, I want to open up today with one of the most well known parables in the Bible. You may have known about it as a child, uh, the parable of the prodigal son, or the lost son found in Luke chapter 15. Would you open up your Bibles with me? We're going to we're going to read it together. If your Bible's there, I encourage you to get your Bible. Every live stream that we're doing here at Life Without Limbs. Um, we're going to read a couple verses together shortly. And I'll wait. When I give you the verse, I'll give you some time to flip to the pages. But Luke, it's in the New Testament, the fourth, uh, the third gospel, uh, the, the gospel according to Luke, the third book of the New Testament. And... Um, I am so thankful to just, first of all, summarize the story as it begins with, first of all, a young man who had a very, very, very wealthy father and a blessed life. Yet he was dissatisfied 
You know how many people have more than you when they feel like they're dissatisfied? Yeah, I do too. He went to his father and asked for his inheritance early, something that would normally not happen. And I kind of wonder, how would I react if I am far from death and my son turns around and says, Daddy, I know that, you know, we got everything we want and more. And, you know, I know that, you know, I'm going to get an inheritance when you're dead. But can I get that a little earlier right now and I'm going to go do my own thing? I mean, like, that's like a slap in the father's face almost. No? I mean, his dad was still alive, yet he wanted his inheritance. The father, who greatly loved his son, gave him what he asked for. The son took his inheritance and wasted it on wild, selfish living. I mean, look at the selfishness of the world. For us who don't believe that there is no other God but God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, whose son is Jesus Christ, who died on the cross for our sins, who rose from the dead, we understand that, that we're not here just to exist and coexist, but to also be purpose-driven in our actions, our words, um, our community influence, to let people know that Jesus loves them. And the world cannot give them the peace that their soul is looking for. The world cannot give them the joy that, that, that they're really deep down looking for. We, we know that that love, joy, and peace can only come through relationship of Jesus Christ. And it's not to say that stuff, you know, it, it ain't cool or, or money is bad. But when you look at the people in this world who can do so many things with so much money, but yet they feel dissatisfied. It, it's the truth that this world will never satisfy, but Jesus will. But the son didn't know that. So the son found himself feeding pigs. After all of this, he went out, trashed all of his friendships, I would imagine, and then got and bought out trash friendships, bought up friendships, right? That probably left him when he was found, when he found himself feeding the pigs for a living, right? And all of a sudden, he realizes, what have I done? You know, money, drugs, sex, alcohol, pornography, fame, fortune, all this stuff. You feel lost and empty and poor. Can you imagine feeding pigs for a living? I never thought of that as a vocation myself. But then the son remembered how his father even treated his slaves well and decided to return home and beg to be one of his father's slaves. So turn with me right now, Luke chapter 15. We're going to read verses 20 to 24. You there? Here we go. So he, the lost son, got up and went to his father. But while he was still a long way off, his father saw him and was filled with compassion for him. He ran to his son threw his arms around him and kissed him. The son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his servants, Quick, bring the best robe and put it on him. Put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet. Bring the fattened calf and kill it. Let's have a feast and celebrate. For this son of mine was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. So they began to celebrate. Come on. No questions, no judgment, no nothing. No, hey, do you remember when you did? Wait, what? You did what? You you what? You you lost all the money and you did this and you did that and no. With no questions, no judgment, he came back as he was. You know, I'll tell you right now, 
Did you know that you have a wealthy heavenly father who has his best in mind for you and a good plan, a good plan for your life and your future? Did you know that you also have an enemy, the devil, who wants to trick you out of your inheritance? You see, John 10, 10, let me, let me uh, just quote it. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. My friends watching right now on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, um, Twitter, and YouTube. Do you want the trick Satan has to offer? Or the treat, the good gift of salvation and the daily relationship with God that God has to offer? That's my question to you. What do you want? The trick or the treat? Death or life? It is interesting to me that some of the most dissatisfied people in the world are the ones who have the most blessings. The devil wants to trick you into believing lies about yourself. That you're ugly. That you're no good. You can't be forgiven. You're not good enough. You'll never be good enough. There is no plan for your life. Lies about your life saying, nope, there's nothing for you. You ain't talented enough. You ain't beautiful enough. And lies about God. God's not there. Where is he? Oh, just, just pray that you feel good and, and, and pray that, you know, when you feel good, then, then that's what you need. No, God has a plan for you. He doesn't, a, a, a promise that you're going to have an excellent life all the time. We're all going to have ups and downs. It's not about praying a certain way and then God giving you everything you want. That's a prosperity gospel. That's evil to believe that God can give you everything you want. God's not a genie. It's not about asking God for everything and then you have everything and then you're good. No, it's about you being saved, your soul being rescued, and you understanding that your home here on earth is not your home. Heaven is home. And God pursues us. And not just to heal our hearts and have a relationship with Him. But it's an epiphany that I realized two weeks ago. Our relationship with, our, with God Almighty. Angels are jealous of it. Because we get to see His miracles here on earth. And we worship Him. Because we know He's with us. Whether we see miracles or not. And God blesses us. God blesses those who believe in Him who can't see him. That's you and me. And I can tell you, I've never been so excited to be alive. Not because my life is going good. Not because I know the answers of what's happening in the future, but because I know that God is with me. And every time I open up my Bible and I'm praying and I'm, and I'm asking God for guidance and wisdom and strength and discernment, he gives it to me. Every time I ask God to change someone's heart, every time I ask God to say, God, Help me to reach someone with the words of your Holy Spirit that they may know you. He does. I'm living my best life. It's got nothing to do with arms and legs. It's got nothing to do with how much has he blessed me this week. What, are you serious? How much has he blessed our ministry? How many more people are giving their life to Jesus Christ? My joy in the Lord isn't about how many more people just gave their life to Jesus Christ tonight. It gets me excited and I give God the glory. But man, I'm doing life with God because God's doing life with me. I ain't falling for the tricks. I ain't falling for the lies. I'm going for the truth and the truth has set me free. I'll tell you when I was trapped in those lies, I was young. I doubted that God had a good plan for my life. I didn't think that he remembered me. I didn't believe he loved me. And I tell you right now, the devil did his best to try and get me when I was young to kill myself. Because I looked at my physical condition and I blamed everything that was bad and all my flaws and imperfections on him. Little did I know that what the enemy meant for evil, God turned it into good. That my broken pieces in the hands of God can actually, in the hands of the good God, Almighty God, the Most High God, who knew my name before the earth began. When I put my broken piece in his hands, man, all you can say, God is good because he can turn that into beautiful things.
from broken to beautiful. Don't let the devil play with your mind any longer, my friends. God is good and he only does good. God has good plans for you, good thoughts towards you. And actually, he can't stop thinking about you. He has more precious thoughts in you than all the grains of sand in the world. My friends, God loves you. Trick or treat. It's our decision. God won't force you to choose him. He didn't force the prodigal son to stay home. But when his son came home, the father received him with open arms and threw a party in celebration of his return. The father said, this son of mine was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. Are you at home, but you feel lost? Are you breathing, but you feel dead? God wants to bring you to life. And he wants you to feel found in his arms. Come to him tonight. I want you to know that if you've never received God's gift of salvation through believing in his son, Jesus Christ, now is the moment for you. Jesus died in your place so you would have eternal life. He took the punishment you should have received because of your sin. And sure, we didn't get to choose to have a sinful nature. That was Adam and Eve. But now you have a decision to believe. Do you believe that Jesus, who had no sin, took the punishment for your sin so that you can have a relationship with him and access his purpose, plan and inheritance of eternal life? If you're saying, yeah, Nick, I'm ready. I want to stop praying every day. I don't want my plan. I want his plan. I don't want my strength. I need his strength. I'm lost and I'm alone and I'm weak. If that's you, close your eyes. And say a prayer. Dear God, I come to you today and I thank you for loving me. I believe, Jesus, you are the Son of God, who's at the right hand of the Father. Holy Spirit, speak to me. I want to know your peace. Fill me, Lord, right now with your peace. I confess that I'm a sinner, and I'll never be perfect. But I want your plan for my life. I want to know you. God, forgive me of all of my sins. Help me to turn away from my sins and stop sinning. Help me to know how to live. Teach me how to pray. Show me how to read my Bible. And speak to me as I seek you. God, heal my heart and let me know what it means to trust you. I give you my brokenness, my fear, my desires, my needs, and I ask you for faith to believe you as my Lord and Savior. I want to know you more and more each and every day in Jesus' name. We pray. Amen. You know, some of you already have a daily walk with Jesus Christ, but you've walked away. Whatever formula you thought that you had in being a Christian, you don't have that fire anymore. Come back to him. Ask for forgiveness. You have a pornographic addiction, ask for forgiveness. You have any other addiction, ask for forgiveness. You've hurt someone really bad, ask for forgiveness. There is always healing in the name of Jesus. Talk to him directly and know that he's with you. Go back to the basics, read your Bible, pray. 
get in touch with us at Life Without Limbs on our website. We'd love to connect with you. Start reading a book, if not the Bible, that talks about the Bible in a way of testimonies of how God changed your life. One of them I encourage you to read is Unstoppable Faith. It's on our website, lifewithoutlimbs.org. There's other resources there that if you've walked away from God or you've said this prayer, that you can get resources there. But can I just tell you right now that if you say that prayer for the first time, I want you to know that I want to know that you just said yes to Jesus. And there's a way that I can know that by simply getting your phone out right now and texting the words LWL Jesus to the number 50700. That's the number 5700. The text is LWL Jesus. And I'm going to send you seven videos over the next seven days as a gift from me to you. Videos that you cannot see anywhere else. And these videos will help you take your first steps in your new relationship with Jesus Christ. Wow. This is fun. It's so cool. Before we begin our Q&A tonight, uh, I want you to watch this video highlighting one of our video library videos for children. I think it's going to make you smile. Well, hello. I'm in the middle of doing my masterpiece. You know, many people think I can't draw, write, or paint, but God has given me this ability to hold pens and pencils and paintbrushes in my mouth and use them to draw or write. Right now, I'm still in the middle of my masterpiece. A masterpiece can be a book, a movie, a piece of music, or a painting that is so perfect and so wonderful that people say, wow, that's amazing. Have you ever heard a song that just makes you want to dance and sing? That is a masterpiece. Have you ever read a book that was so good you didn't want to stop reading? That is a masterpiece too. Maybe you have seen a painting that was so lifelike that it seemed like the artist took a picture of a person instead of painting a person. That is another masterpiece. Can I tell you a secret? You are a masterpiece. That's right. You are a special, unique, beautiful piece of art that is truly amazing. You are a masterpiece created by God. And God is the best artist. God only makes awesome and wonderful things. And that is you. I tell you right now, uh, the ministry of Life Without Limbs cannot do what we do without monthly partners. And with our monthly partners, we, um, we call them actually hope partners. And uh, they help us to do what we do. And I just want to say, if you're a monthly partner, thank you for financially supporting us. And in one of our initiatives um, of building out this up to 250, 300 videos for children, teenagers, general audience, and senior videos, we want to not just preach the gospel, but we want to help everyone with the first steps and then get connected to someone uh, who can help them along the way and then open up dialogue for questions from children, um, teenagers and everyone who watch these videos, 
who can connect with someone on our team at Life Without Limbs. So, so excited to have been able to share that with you. And I'm just going to ask my team member to take this iPad and um, make it in a way that it doesn't go dark after a minute. And then I'm going to get into this Q&A. Uh, first question actually came from TikTok. Um, do you sin? Um, do I sin? Every day, I know that I am a child of God, and I know that Jesus died once and for all. I don't have to do any pilgrimage. I don't have to go to my priest. Jesus is my priest, according to the Bible. And so what I understand is that as a child of God, fully forgiven and healed, um, we also know that in Philippians, it says, he who began a good work in you will complete it until the day of Jesus Christ. And as we hunger and thirst for righteousness, which is my desire and my intention with putting in habits that don't come natural to flesh, <laughs> which is reading my Bible, which is praying, which is surrounding myself with other people who also love the Lord, who grow in their love of the Lord and actually go out, not just talk to talk, but walk the walk. It's in that community as a family of God that I get to encourage um, other people and them, me, um, as we all struggle with sin from day to day. Um, if you believe that you don't have any sin, you are an absolute fool. Uh, please check out the uh, Ten Commandments. And if you don't have a Bible, you can Google it. So uh, we all understand that all of us has jealousy sometimes. All of us have hatred sometimes. If you hate someone, um, it's almost as if you've killed them in your own heart. Um, and in Matthew, it says that actually, if you haven't forgiven everyone who's hurt you, you actually don't go to heaven. And the reason for that is when you really believe in the true forgiveness and full forgiveness of Jesus Christ, because the blood that was shed as the atonement for our sins, um, we realize that as God has forgiven us of our sins, who are we not to forgive others? And so it's us understanding the forgiveness of, of us to other people isn't about the people. It's not against flesh and blood. It's against powers and principalities of darkness. And uh, we pray for those people that they may see evil that they're doing against us. But yet at the same time, um, we, we, we ask that God would stop their deeds and that they'd repent. Um, but also we pray for their souls in that. You know, I want my worst enemy to go to heaven. I do. I don't want them to go to hell. Hell is terrible. Um, and so when you believe on that uh, and you realize that every day is a, um, a journey that we continue to take one step at a time with Jesus Christ. And, um, you know, as you grow and learn and mature in your walk with God, you leave some childish things behind. Um, and so we all do sin, but as you hunger and thirst for righteousness, um, you, you do nothing but continue to pursue that. And when you fail on a daily basis, um, you ask for forgiveness of sin and say, God, I'm sorry. I, I know I did mess up today. Help me. Um, maybe ask some friends of yours to pray for you with the struggles that you're having. Uh, maybe find a counselor in your church if that's what you need to talk through something. So I love you all very much. And that's my answer to that question. Um, how do you stay so positive from TikTok? Um, thank you for your question, Scott Pierre. Um, you know, I, I'll tell you right now, I wasn't so positive the last three days. And I'm on camera and this is not a fake smile. Let me tell you. Uh, the joy and strength that you see in my eyes is not fake. It's real. Um, I can tell you, uh, we have ups and downs, don't we? But the, the reason why I quote unquote stay so positive uh, is because I know that I'm a child of God and that God's not going to let me go through more than I can handle. And God is listening to my prayers and I'm seeing him work. I'm seeing him work in the lives of other people around me as I pray for them, as we pray for miracles, um, as we pray for the ministry, huge doors opening up all around. Uh, it's been so incredibly beautiful to see the fruit of me traveling to 74 countries 
and preaching in front of nine and a half million people, of which 1.1 million gave their life to Jesus Christ. Um, if I am having a bad day, I just kind of have to go back to that and say, hey, I know there's more to do. And we're here to occupy until his return, his second coming, Jesus Christ. Um, and I think uh, it's because a lot of people are praying for me. A lot of people are encouraging me. Um, in fact, we have um, 300 people who've gone through our application to be a prayer army warrior. We're praying for another 100. Maybe you are that last 100 that we're waiting for. There's an application where you're going to get prayer requests from me to pray for my team in ministry. Um, and we're so excited to invite you in on that. And the email for that, if you want to email, is prayerarmy at lifewithoutlimbs.org. Is that correct? Is website. website. Just go to lifewithoutlimbs.org. Um, love you guys so much. Um, Cody G., how were you able to keep God as a main priority while trying to keep your mental health stable? Well, if you look at these six factors of a full life as a human being, you have faith, family, friends, finance, fitness, fun. My faith in God affects me and my family, who I am as a husband, who I am as a father. Um, my faith with my friends who I am as a friend. How do I instill faith in them? How do I encourage them? How do I help them? My faith is the true north of my compass of the fiduciary responsibilities and, and wisdom in what to do with my money, whether it's saving, tithing, investing, and living. Um, there are many biblical principles and books out there that are based on the Bible that help me, but I don't just spend money just because I spend money. I'm always thoughtful for, through the filter of faith in how we wisely um, execute financial decisions. Also fitness. We know that uh, um, we are here to live uh, as if it's our last day, uh, but at the same time, plan as if you're living here another thousand years. That's what the Bible says. So the longer I can live, the more people can uh, can hear the gospel of Jesus Christ. And I can hopefully see my great grandchildren. Uh, that's what I'm hoping for. And lastly, fun. Um, people think that, oh, faith and fun are separate. Nah, man, are you kidding me? Um, God wants us to have fun. He's given us this earth and friends and things to experience that righteously we can enjoy fun together. So I guess the, the answer to my question is God is always the main priority. There is a God driven purpose in every area of my life, whether it's spending time with my wife, whether it's spending time with my kids, whether it's me just sitting silent, whether it's me talking to my team um, or someone across the street. It's always about understanding that I can't talk to someone without a an impact to either negative or positive. And uh, I'm going to be intentional to make sure it's positive. Am I perfect? No. Um, but that's that's the goal. we got to go for it. Uh, when did I become a Christian? Um, I became a Christian. Oh, wait, you know what, Cody? Let me explain something else, maybe. My mental health is also based on community, big time community. Um, friends, family, even counseling. Um, 2020 actually was so difficult that I actually went through counseling myself. And so don't be afraid to do that too. I just want to share that with you. When did I become a Christian? I became a Christian at age 15. Um, and there's this beautiful, beautiful video on YouTube, LWL Hope, um, that you can see knowing God. Um, my testimony is there in full. But I gave my life to Jesus Christ at 15 years old. So where am I? I'm 38 years old, so 23 years ago. Pretty cool. And I've been preaching the gospel as an ordained minister of the gospel, as an evangelist, since age 19. So this is the 20th year that I've been evangelizing. Praise God. Uh, last question. Are prayer hours biblical? The apostles and people in the Bible prayed at certain times of the day, which some call prayer watches. Well, I know some people who have 
in the gift of being an intercessory prayer warrior where they can pray for hours and hours and hours and hours through the night as well. I'm not gifted that way, uh, but I kind of, I don't put aside time to pray except for uh, the morning when I wake up, pray before every meal. Um, but at the same time, I never cease praying. The Bible says, pray without ceasing and everything give thanks for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. And so uh, it's almost as if Jesus is standing next to me. It's not like I have to text him. Hey, can I talk to you in a minute? Um, he's there. He's my friend. He's, he's, he's co-leading my life. He's leading my life. Um, you know, he's driving the car and I'm in the front passenger side. So we're always talking. Um, and then I guess that's the best way to, to do that. So God hears you every prayer, any hour. <laughs> and, uh, he may not always say yes to your prayer requests as we covered, but, uh, we know that he is a good God. He's got a good plan and all things come together for the good, for those who love him, who have been called according to his purposes, according to Romans 8, 28. Well, it's been an incredible, incredible, beautiful night together with you. Uh, next one is the 27th of October, Wednesday night. And I'm so excited. Please, please, please put that on your calendar at 8 p.m. Central Standard Time. I'm so excited to be live streaming again with you and tell everyone you know to join us then. Trick or treat, God is good. Good night.